Hello, it's Maria Burke here again today with you. Thank you for joining me. And um, I'm just showing you here, uh, looking, zooming in on the photograph that I used for the painting that I'm going to talk you through today. And uh, yeah, we'll just get started. Uh, as you can see, again, I put down a red ground, just really very rough, very loose ground in um, acrylic paint. And it's just a light wash. And it was probably only partly dry, but I am also using acrylics. I think this is like a dark um, blue color um, <clears throat> just to do the under sketch. So the underpainting, really, that's what this is. So, yeah, there's several figures in this. There's two horses. Um, one, you can see it's got its rear uh, to the fore and the other one, the young there's a young, um, a young lad up on the horse in the background. And then you've got this man, uh, you can see on the right hand side, he's walking um, towards the foreground. And there's also two children. Um, one is more like a teenage girl on the right and it looks like her little brother with her. And here I am drawing in the a truck. So there's a big truck, there's houses in the background and the truck is some sort of a chip van or some sort of a, there, there's things being sold out of the truck. So as you can see, this uh, painting, there's a lot of perspective in it and it's, this is a really good way to get perspective, but this was, I'm just taking this from the drawing I had or from the the photograph that I'm using, um, <clears throat> where you see the line of the buildings um, going on a diagonal. And the two top lines, um, say the line of the houses, um, is coming down and uh, it's, it's forming a V there where the sky, um, <clears throat> the lower part of that sky there. Uh, where the houses then on the other side of the street start to rise up. So that's how you put in perspective. You have lines that are going in diagonals into the distance, into a, a point of infinity, they call it. Um, you can see here I actually place the boy too high up. And as I'm putting in the lights here, the lighter colour, the lighter blue, I painted across his head because I want to bring him down in size. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I was talking to you before about why I do this, why I don't draw in pencil or in charcoal. And the reason is, is that, you know, blocking it in in paint is a way for me to see not only is the composition working, but also what tones I need to use, what colours I need to use. So it's a way of blocking the painting in and putting paint down. I'm still working in acrylics um, because I know those acrylics are going to dry really, really quickly. So yeah, the acrylics just very, very easy to use, very useful. And you can see these horses, they, their heads kind of cross. One is looking forward and one is looking back. One is looking into the distance there. And they, these men, this man in the foreground, he seems to be um, reaching towards the boy on the horse. And there's another man with him on the right hand side of him that you'll see me bringing in as we go on. And both of them seem to be very, very busy. Maybe, I don't know, are they, do they own the horse or is one of them trying to buy the horse? So there's a lot of movement there. There's a lot of kind of action as they're, as they're looking at the horse.
And then the, you've got this man coming as a, I'm just drawing him in there. Um, a real kind of countryman. And he's coming forward. So, yeah, this uh, in the last painting I did, you may have seen it. Um, it was the painting of the girl on the horse. Um, <clears throat> there was a chip van. Uh, on the left hand side of the girl and I really had a battle with that chip fan. <laughs> it was so busy, there was so much going on and I was about actually most of the way through this painting and I began to realise I'm in danger of doing the exact same thing again because that chip van here, um, it may have been a burger van or some, something like that, it reads a really big truck, they're selling things out of the back of it. So I was in danger of getting that very cluttered up as well, the background. Not so much as the last one, but yeah, there, there was a, there's a lot going on there right in the very centre of this painting. So right now, yeah, I'm, I'm filling in the horse, putting in the highlights on the horse. I really enjoy uh, painting horses. And this is my first time, I think, that I've ever painted horses like this. I, I don't remember ever doing a painting of horses before, but I just find them really beautiful to paint. I struggled a lot more with the, the figure of the man here um, in this picture because he had a, a check shirt on him. And uh, when people are wearing sort of things, I, I didn't have to put in the check, but when you, I decided I put him in because he's the check shirt in because he's such a focal part of the painting. I thought it would add interest to it, but you can get bogged down in things like details, you know, like patterns and check and um so yeah, there was that there was that thing with him, but I think he worked out okay. I had to go over that a few times over what he was wearing. And there's a lot of legs of horses right in here. The the horse in the background, his legs are coming down. So still working away in acrylic. And just yeah, still just filling in, blocking in that painting. And everywhere where you see the red, that's the background coming through the underpainting. So really, I'm working um, to get rid of the red. Even though I don't mind it peeking through here and there, but for the most part, I want to cover the painting, cover it up, cover up the ground. See, I would, as, when I start a painting like this, there's a lot of freedom in it. There's a lot of enjoyment in it. Because I'm getting so much work done so fast. Now, it took me in total, I think it was almost two hours. It's a lot bigger than the previous paintings I've done um, for this video series. And I normally work on bigger canvases, even bigger than this. But for the purpose of making these videos, I decided to try different sizes and shapes of canvases. And my previous videos, I got smaller and smaller. I was working on these tiny, like just a few inches, you know, six inches wide, four, um, four inches high. Um, they're tiny little paintings. And I did these two tiny studies of Karami horse fair. That's my subject matter at the moment. I was at the Kahrami Horse Fair two years in a row. <clears throat> I was there in 2019 and 2018. And I really wish I could go so much. I wish I could go this year. But I really have my doubts as to whether it will be running. Um, with all the quarant quarantining and everything. I have my doubts whether um, it, it, it's on the 
12th of June, either the 12th, yeah, I think it's the 12th of June every year. So that's getting quite close, but it would be really lovely. I'd love to go bring my video camera and just take lots of photographs and lots of video footage because there is just so much to see. There's so much going on. I mean, it's fabulous to see horses all over the streets. It, it just brings you back to what maybe what life was once like a long, long time ago. It's... Yeah, it's a throwback to bygone times. And here I have moved on to oils. I know because I'm bringing in some extra colours. And... Um, so the oil paint, it's more slow drying. And... Yes, I came back to it here. So I've started working again here. Did a little bit of work in the meantime on that painting on the sky. And I'm going back to the sky again. I felt um, the sky, I had a lot of, I had some blue sky in and I had some clouds. And I felt there was too much going on in the sky and I just wanted to simplify the sky down. So this is the oil painting, working on the oils here now. And they're very fluid. I just love oils. I think they're really beautiful to work with. They're very luminous, very bright. So just working here on simple oil painting. And trying to keep this painting loose. Um, I think up to this point I felt that, yeah, it was... It was pretty lively, the painting was pretty lively, but I still wanted to get in a little bit more depth, a little bit more detail into it, more colour into it, uh, just to give it more of a finished look. So as you can see, I'm less that I spent another fair bit of time finishing this painting and adjusting it and moving things around. So here yeah, I'm looking at the light part of the painting. I'm putting in highlights. And really, it's one thing I really want to focus on is light. In this series of paintings, keeping them bright, keeping them light. So down around that horizon line, as you can see, the street goes down. Um, <clears throat> if you if you move down on the horizontal from the top left of the painting and watch those roofs sloping down to over the man's head, that man in the orangey, peachy coloured uh, shirt, that's where the horizon is really down there and that's where I wanted to put the palest part of the painting, the brightest part of the sky. That's kind of your infinity point somewhere down behind his head where all the lines in this painting should be converging to give the perspective. So there are my lights. I think I'm mixing up some other colours now. Yes, I'm, I'm darkening down this left-hand corner. I 
and bringing back my blues. As you can see, the what I'm working from, um, the picture on the right that's on my laptop is very blue. So there's a lot of blue now coming into the picture, even though I love trying to get away from blues. I, t I tend to use a lot of blue. And uh, but some blues can be absolutely beautiful. I'm working again on that sky. Yeah, I just use a very simple palette. I, it's just I buy one of those. Um, they're just uh, disposable palettes. Um, they're just paper, um, plastic coated paper that you can peel off. And you can just tear pieces of them off, tear the pages off as you use them. So again, yeah, bringing in my highlights here. So I mix up, um, I just put down my yellow, I put down a orangey red, and I also have a pinky red, and I have blue, deep, deep blue, and a white, obviously. And that's about it. That's all I put down and I mix up all my colours from that. And I find that good. I find it good not to be to just just to have a limited palette. Because then I can make up my own colours, it keeps things very simple. And I just put out as much colour as I need at any particular time. As I was working through this painting, um, there's kind of two ways you can work. You could work just focusing on line, focusing on the outlines, the figures, the shapes, the the direction they're moving in. And at times I was focusing on that. I was focusing on um, the figures themselves and filling in, like I'm filling in this man's shape filling in the highlights on this girl, working on the, let's say, the focal points, the, the main figures in the painting. But I came to a point where um, I think I stood up there and had to look back at it and I'd think about what I was going to do next. Um, and I, I obviously decided at this point that this focal figure, this boy on the horse, he needed some, I needed to put in the details on him and really, I suppose you have to decide who is the focus of this painting. Obviously that horse on the left is really, really important, but the boy up on the horse is also very important. So I needed to bring in detail on him. I'm also putting in more colour into the horse. But a point then came in the painting where I had to think about the background and how was the background going to fit in with the foreground. And then I started looking at the painting in a different way. I started looking at the shapes in the background. I began to look at the painting in a more abstract way and instead of looking at her as a girl, I started looking at her as a shape. 
and looking at the background as shapes and how the background shapes basically in an abstract way blended in to her shape. So it does really help to do that, to stop looking at it in a realistic way, but to look at it as a series of abstract shapes and colors. And how those colours work together and those shapes blend in together. And that helps to bring, to pull your painting together. So yeah, I'm looking at these abstract shapes under the truck. And also on the foreground, on the, on the street. And the... What direction, the movement really, pulling everything together and putting in the shadows on the, the ground. It's really important to look at the shadows. And I'm also putting in some, I saw behind that man who's walking towards us, um, I saw some shapes around him that I put in that kind of draw you into the background as well. Here I'm just trying to bring a little bit more detail in. Working on the, the overall look of the, the finished piece now. Again, that chip fan is, was a bit... Uh, <laughs> It's a question of how much detail do I put in on that truck? Does it need a lot of detail? And the more detail I put in on the truck, is that going to take away from my the drama that's happening in front of it? Whether these guys are haggling. I'm not even sure from the photograph if they're haggling or whether they're just chatting with the boy or whether they're talking to one another. Um, but it's very lively. Anyway, this this scene between the boy on the horse and the two men and the girl. Well, the the girl, I suppose, and this little boy just behind her. They're they're observing, but they're obviously with the people who are um, talking about the horse. The two men. I'm also, I was also thinking about here about the those background, those background shapes, and what color should they be? Should they be warm? Should they be cool? If they're shadows, should they be cool? Should they be warm? And just obviously having a, a change of mind about the color of that house. <laughs> Lightening it up. But I wanted to keep them loose. I didn't want to keep them too architectural. I didn't want to make them look um, perfect. I want them to look painterly. You know, to have them soft and that you could see the brushwork and the lines and the light. So again, yeah, my whole preoccupation is to keep movement going. And the reason um, 
this is the reason I'm doing these paintings. It's the reason why I'm recording, because I really want to have some breakthrough with my work. And I felt the best way to get breakthrough and to change up what I'm doing, get more life into it, get more energy, try out new things, is to do a painting a week. And so what was going to motivate me to do a painting every week? I thought if I put them up on YouTube, that will motivate me. That will keep me going. So um, it's a great little goal. It's a great little uh, incentive just to go and uh, do at least one painting. I'm hoping to do more than one painting a week. But for now, it's just I've been busy. Um, <clears throat> so I've been doing around one painting a week for the last few weeks. Um, but I've seen other people do, do it and just seeing, you know, within a year or two, just a vast improvement in their style, in what they're doing. And I also have a big tendency to, if I don't like a painting, I'll paint over it. So often I have no record of what I've done. Uh, because I've painted over anything that I didn't like. So for this year, I'm not going to paint over anything. I'm, I'm going to try and stick to that, unless I absolutely hate it. Um, I'm going to keep the a record of all the paintings I've done. And then at the end of the year, I'm going to look back and see if I see that improvement that I'm expecting and that I'm hoping for. And the focus of it is, is that I want to bring in more light, more energy, um, more fluidity, more vibrancy into what I'm doing. I don't want it to be stiff and dead. I, I tend to overwork my paintings and I want to stop that. I want to, as well, working on the paintings for YouTube, um, it makes me put a time limit on them. I can't spend hours and hours and I can't spend days, which I often did in the past, spend days and days, weeks working on one piece. And all I'm doing is going back and forth and back and forth and not resolving it. Whereas this way, um, and as you see, every time uh, I get up, I'm actually standing back to have a look at it and make a decision. Um, so this way, yeah, I'll have a record at the end of the year of what was working, what wasn't working. And I've got a time limit. And um, it's teaching me to work to a time and not let things drag on and on. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of advantages of, of using YouTube. I mean, I'm, some artists, if you look at artists, they they use it as a, a way of, uh, it's a, like a gallery for their work. It's a way of showing their work, selling their work. There's so many um, different advantages to using a YouTube channel. Uh, but for now, basically, the main thing is to develop my work over the next 12 months. And uh, that's it. I'm at the end of the painting. So... This is as far as I've got. I probably will do a little bit more work. That's the original um, photograph. As you can see, it is very blue. And thank you for joining me today. Uh, my website is artistmariaburke.wordpress.com and I'm also on Facebook under Maria Burke. Here's some details. So it's great to have you with me. And talk to you soon.